Hey guys, so today I actually wanted to talk about specifically these 500 amp fuses. Um, there are many that have not measured up to what they were rated for, but specifically these 500 amp SCAR fuses, these are downright dangerous. Um, and in today's video, I plan on showing you exactly why. So we're gonna do some testing and put these on my test bench and I'm gonna figure out, you know, they popped very quickly at 300 amps. So I'm gonna try maybe 200 amps um, as a steady current. And we're going to see, you know, how the fuses perform as well as the heat generated. So basically, if you believe you're getting a 500 amp fuse, say you just got, you know, a new 5,000 watt amp that says diffuse at 500 amps. Um, so you get one of these and you, you know, you think you're good to go. I don't think so. We're going to, we're going to test these and we're going to put them on the test bench and I'm going to pull about 200 amps through them. Um, based on, you know, the resistance, I think that should be a fairly good point for these. I think they'll be able to handle 200 amps. Um, they blew very quickly at anything over 300, but we're going to measure the heat generated. So, Basically, if you buy one of these for, you know, for what you believe you're fusing is 500 amps, what's gonna happen if you're only pulling 200 amps through it, which it's very likely to see more, even if in just short bursts. So, um, or it's gonna pull a static 200, somewhere near that maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and, and discuss this while the battery bank actually charges up. So for those of you who have not seen one of my videos before, um, how I'm going to measure this is I have a fuse hooked up here and I'm measuring the voltage before the fuse and I'm measuring the voltage immediately after the fuse and that corresponds with these two meters. So there's a little bit of difference but not a significant amount. Um, on this one, because this one's not actually hooked up to current, it's just being used as a voltage monitor. Um, we will see the difference from this one to this one, and that's the voltage drop, and this will indicate how many amps we're pulling through it. To measure everything today, I will actually be using a a thermal camera here and it will be set to um, show us the highest temperature on the screen that is the upper right hand corner um, you can see right now the highest temperature point is actually the monitors if we look over at the fuses there's you know no substantial heat to speak of we're at about 72 or so at the fuse. So um, we'll be starting off, you know, room temperature and measure what happens, not only with the voltage drop, but today we're specifically looking at the heat. I'm going to pull um, far less than these are rated for. You know, in this situation, you're using this 500 amp fuse on, you know, like a 5,000 watt amplifier or even a 300 watt amplifier. Um, you know, I'm just setting it for 200 amps and I'm going to let it go and see how this fuse handles that. Now, as a 500 amp fuse, um, it should handle it fantastically. We should have very little heat generation and it should be able to support this current more or less indefinitely. Uh, but we will see if that's the case based on the fact that we know these fuses from our previous videos have blown at like, you know, barely over 300 amps, which is far less than the rate before. So um, it may blow at 200 amps. We will find out, but I think it should be able to handle 200 amps. But that's actually my concern is, you know, how does it handle that? And what kind of heat are we talking about? So I'm going to let these go ahead and charge up for another couple of minutes and then we then we'll begin the test. Okay. 
Um, we're ready to begin the test. I'm going to uh, turn on my inverter now and we'll be pulling about 200 amps ideally through the 500 amp SCAR fuse starting now. So I'm going to be watching the temperature. And just watching the temperature, we are already up to, let's see, we're already up to about 221 degrees. We're at 270 now. We are already at about 300 degrees peak. We are now 300 and oh, over 400 in places now. Oh, and it actually blew. Um, 420, wow, we were over 420 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long that lasted, but I think about a minute at, what, 200 amps. So that, again, that was pretty bad. Um, I'm going to see if I have more of these. I, I hope I do. And we will dial back the current a bit and see how it does. But that was over 400 degrees that quickly at only 200 amps, guys. That's, you know, we're getting dangerous at that point because um, the heat will spread. You know, um, as you can see, it's all centralized to the fuse here, but if it were to get much hotter, it would begin you know, actually spreading through my wiring and causes everything to heat up, you know, as a result. So let me see if I have another one of these 500 amp fuses and we'll put another one on the bench and see how it does at, you know, less amperage. Okay, I actually have an unopened temp pack here. Okay, so this time we are going to tone it down quite a bit and try for around 150 amps and see what we get. Okay, so we're already up to about 145 degrees, so that spiked very rapidly still. We're at 160, 170. Okay, we're getting spikes up to over 190 now. Over 200. Okay, we're at 220. Okay, 
who are over 230. Right, we are breaking 250 now. Two sixty. Sitting at 395 is the highest I'm seeing right now. I know we are seeing over 400. The fuse finally did blow after sitting sustained at, you know, over 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for a prolonged period of time. So you would think that these would be safe, you know, at anywhere even close to that current. And you would be wrong. I mean, you could very easily uh, begin melting plastic. Um, you know, over prolonged periods of time, if you didn't manage to blow the fuse because your current wasn't constant, you could be slowly damaging your fuse, causing more resistance, causing, you know, a plethora of problems. So, um, do with this information what you will. Um, I think these fuses are dangerous and you know, I wonder how many melted fuses have, melted fuse holders have been a result of this. I wonder, you know, how many issues have resulted because I know these are very popular fuses. So, um, you know, if you want to get some better fuses, check out the link down below. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, please give us a, our channel a subscribe. We're constantly trying to, you know, figure out what you guys want to see tested. If you have anything you'd like to see tested, um, definitely comment it below. That way we know what kind of videos to make for everyone. All right. Have a good day, everyone, and let us know if you have any questions.